God had given Moses the Ten Commandments. In the great book of Exodus, Moses was coming down from the mountain having been given, Thou shalt have no gods before me. Thou shalt have no graven, carved, and molten images of anything in heaven above, on the earth, under the earth. Don't bow down to them. Honor thy father and mother. Keep the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain and so forth. And as Moses came down from the mountain expecting to see the people, excited to see him, lifting their hands, shouting the glory of Almighty God, shaking and quaking in the trembling terror of the fear of the Lord. That's not what he saw. He came down. And I'm reading Exodus 32 and verse 6. Here's what he saw from the people. And this is what I see in First Americans today. They rose up early on the morrow and offered up burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink. And they rose up to play. They did not bow down. To pray, praying through to a breakthrough, taking hold of the horns of the altar, praying without ceasing. No, they rose up to play. Jesus said, watch and pray, but all you want to do is watch TV and watch movies and watch streaming videos. And sit in Lucifer's lap on your laptop and stare at streaming videos that only lead to a steaming lake of fire. All you want is screen time, not scripture time. You want to play and not to pray. I started yesterday preaching about priorities, passions, purposes, and preparations. And I only got to my first two points, and that was your profession, your job. Is your job a sin? Are you a worker of iniquity? Are you involved in the industries of iniquity? Do you need to quit your job and get right with God? And number two, your partner. Who are you living with? Is your relationship a relationship that's Christ-honoring and God-exalting? Or are you living in fornication and adultery, shacking up and, and living together? But number three, we're going to pick it up right here based on the text that I read to you from the 32nd chapter of Exodus. And number three, very simply, you're playing games. Your Playstations. Your Xboxes. Your Maddens. Your EA Sports and your Nintendo. We used to raise generations who prayed in schools where the Ten Commandments were on the wall. We used to raise kids in the fear and the admonition of the Lord on the Ten Commandments. But now we raise them on Nintendo. It's a sin. We've raised a generation that no longer reads. They're functionally illiterate. They just want to see images and videos. And that's why this generation is going to hell and going to the dogs. This is why our schools are being shot up. Because we no longer have the Ten Commandments on the wall of the schools. We no longer pray to God in the schools. But we play video games. We play on screens. We play on the internet. All of this is sin. Number four. Your potions. Your potions. We got a pill for this. I might as well give you my fifth point. Go along my fourth. Your prescription pills. Your prescription pills and painkillers. Your potions, your prescription pills, and your painkillers. We are addicted on Oxy. We are addicted to Vicodin. We are addicted to every opioid and every alcohol and heroin and cocaine. We are the most uh, drug-addicted alcoholic culture in the history of the world. We got a pill for this, a pill for that, a drink for this, a drink for that. But none of it works. 
The only RX pill that can take away your sin, your addiction, and your bondage is the cross of Jesus Christ. You don't need a pill. You need Calvary's hill. The old rugged cross still makes the difference. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Brother Mike, I need to go to rehab and get right. Friend, rehab's not going to help you. You don't need rehab. You need resurrection. You don't need rehab. You need righteousness. You don't need rehab. You need redemption. You don't need rehab. You need restoration. You don't need rehab. Glory be to God. You need to get right with God. Are you listening to me? It's not 12 steps. It's not 12 steps. It's three steps. The ABCs of Christianity. The altar. The blood. And the cross. The cross can clean you up. The codes. And the chips. And the cards. Of Bill Gates. And Steve Jobs and Marky Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos and Sundar Pichai will not clean you up, will not save you. Those things are sin. The mark, the image, the number, the name of the beast. I'll tell you what can clean you up. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame near the cross, at the cross. You need to repent. My next point of your personal computers and you need to find a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who loved you and died for you on Calvary's cruel cross of Golgotha. You don't need IBM. You need intercession. Glory be to God forever. You don't need HP. You need holiness and propitiation. You don't need Intel. You need intercession. You don't need Michael Dell and Dell computers and, life, and lifestyles. The only thing that will keep you out of hell is not Michael Dell and his computers. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you on the cross. My next point. Your psychologists and psychiatrists. We got a whole generation addicted on counseling and therapy. It does you no good. The, the shrinks who have shrunk the gospel are more messed up mentally than you are. You do not need therapy. You do not need a counselor's couch. Listen to me. You need the cross. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the counselor, the comforter, the parakletos. What you need is the parakletos of Pentecost. You don't need to sit on your couch staring at TV and Matt and Lori Crouch all day and all night and becoming a crouch potato. No, 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 no. Get off your couch. Get off your beds of ivory. Get off of that and come to the cross. You don't need a couch. You don't need counseling. You don't need therapy. You need the tree of Calvary, the old rugged cross. Jesus said, deny yourself. Mark chapter 8, take up your cross and follow me. Your profession, your partner, your playing games and playstations, your potions, your prescription pills and painkillers, you need to forget opioids, Oprah, Obama, and Obi-Wan and learn the book of Obadiah. And our next point, you're partying. What Moses found when he came down from the mountain, they should have been praying, but what were they doing? The Bible said in Exodus 32, they were having a naked orgy. They were having a drunk orgy. It says they were eating and drinking and, 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 and marrying and giving in marriage. And this and they were just party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. And the Bible says they even took the gold and they fashioned a golden calf. Well, if I look at America today, the wealth nation in the history of the world that worships money as their number one God. I see the golden calf. The golden calf. America bows to the idol God, the golden calf of money. But that God of money, if you trust it, will send you to the deepest, darkest, dankest dungeon of the devil's hell. Partying. 
party goes on. Oh, you gotta open the clubs, open the bars, open the dance clubs, open it up, party, shake your booty, shake, party, get drunk, get high, get buzz. Oh, dude, judgment's coming, judgment day is coming, Jesus is coming, and you are going to stand before God. And listen to me, one step outside sobriety is a big step into hell. I said one step outside sobriety is a big step right into hell. The party has got to stop. Look, times of plagues, pandemics, and pestilences are not a time to party. They're not a time to pray, to play. They are a time to pray. It's not a time to party and to laugh and to dance. It is a time to rend our hearts, not our garment. It is a time to pray through. It is a time to weep and wail between the porch and the altar. It is a time to take hold once again of the horns of the altar and to get right with God and to repent. Your phones. To 99.9% .9 of you, your iPhone and your smartphone is an idle phone and a sin phone. It is a cathedral of images. It is a pornography delivery device. It contains every porn scene ever shot in the history of pornography, yet you give it to your children and you say, oh, well, I'm strong enough not to look at the bad stuff. I only use it for good. No, you don't. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to God. Don't lie to your wife. The Bible says all liars shall have their place in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. You need to come clean. You need to fess up. You need to repent. Next, you're pigging out. I have never seen a nation so fat. I have never seen so many obese. You see this belly right here? I'm 54 years old. I'll take on any 24-year-old in America. Glory be to God. I can outlift you. I can out bench press you. I can out preach or curl you. Why? Because this body, hallelujah, is the temple of Almighty God. One of the reasons we have the plague of COVID-19 is we're fat. We eat, drink, and be merry. We're obese. Why? Because we sit on our butt all day in front of screens instead of getting on our face in front of the scripture. Your body's a temple of the Lord, but you've made it the house of devils. You're idle and lazy and you live a sedentary life and you're fat and you're foolish. We don't need faster and faster internet right now. Give it to me now. No, we need to fast and pray and declare a solemn assembly. Your professional sports. Most of you are shopping. Professional sports for the guys, for the ladies, you're shopping. We're even. Online, electronic shopping, at the mall, I don't care. Dudes, professional sports. Ladies, you're shopping. You spend more time shopping from Amazon and the electronic commerce, which is an idol from beastly, blasphemous Bezos at Amazon, than you do studying the word of Almighty God and praying through. It's a fact. It's an idol. You have an idol problem. You're professional sports and you're pigskins. You're pigskins. College too. And yet you go to church on Sunday morning and self-righteously you sing, It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Is it? Let's change the words. Instead of saying it is well in bragging and in arrogance, assuming, hoping, maybe, no, 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 presuming, no, 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 no. You ought to say, is it well? Is it well? Is it well? Is it well with my soul? Or am I on my way to eternal hell? Bryce Harper can have all the millions. It's not going to save him and his Mormon skin from eternal hell. Your possessions. Jesus said, this is my next point, you, 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 what will it profit a man if he gains the whole wide stinking world? Mr. Buffett? Mr. Zuckerberg? Mr. Cook? Mr. Pichar? Mr. Jack Dorsey? If you gain 
the whole stinking rotten world. What good will it do? What profit will it be if you lose your soul, Tim Cook, and God cooks you in hell forever? Your possessions. Your possessions. Jesus said, take all that you have. Sell it. Give to the poor. And come follow me. Hallelujah. We'll pick up tomorrow. It's Pastor Mike. I love you. God bless you.